just like that, her circles improved amazingly. Welcome to another Q&A Friday. Today's question comes from a viewer who is worried about her work at home. She says, my arena work seems to be all circles. What should I be doing when I ride when I'm at home? So this is something that lots of students ask me or you know, they bring it, bring it up all the time and often even non-students when I'm uh, talking to them, they say, oh, I, you know, all I seem to do at home is circles and I don't really know what else to do. You know, what else can I do? And the, the important thing is that you want variety and you don't want variety for the sake of variety. You want variety to ensure that your horse is adjustable, so that your horse is supple, so that your horse is getting stronger doing different things. So you don't need variety you know, just so that you're not getting bored, that's got nothing to do with it. Uh, you need the variety of lines and work so that the horse can develop properly. So, you know, what you wanna do, and I think one of the biggest problems is that um, riders don't give themselves an imperative. You know, they, the reason why circles are so easy and so endless is because you know you can do one and you think oh well what you know what did that mean you can do one and it's okay so you do another one and it's still okay so you do another one and that one's still okay too but really what the problem is is you as a rider if you said i'm only doing one circle and i have to get it right you would do the circle you would get it right and then you would move on and go and do something else so it's when you don't think it's when as a rider the circle isn't important enough that you think you can do go on and do three or four or five or six or endless um, and you know there's nothing don't feel like you're doing the wrong thing lots of riders have done this for a long time but it's just that it, there's not enough importance placed on the circle that the rider and the horse think that they need to do it really really well so how good do you think your circle would be if you could only do one you've only got one chance and you know just like in a test you only get one chance to do that circle and then you have to go off and do something else so you can start treating your training a bit like that as well you know, you, you've changed rein, you've come around the long side and you get to do a circle at B or whatever. You know, you only get to do one and then you have to go off and do something else. So you can treat your training a bit like that as well and, um, and incorporate all the other lines. You know, there's also loops, there's, you know, and you can do a 10 meter loop, you can do a five meter loop, you can do uh, serpentines um, and that's just, all, that's only in prelim level as well. Don't forget teardrops. Um, and then the change of rain across X from E to B. All of those things are, some, you know, all of those things can be incorporated into your workout and there's, that's perfectly fine. So instead of, instead of thinking, oh, I'll get the circle right next time, I'll get the circle right next time, just give yourself one, at most two. You know, if you're doing some trot and canter transitions, you might actually need two to get it right. If you're doing the transition on the actual circle, if you're doing the transition on uh, at A or in a corner, um, then you can you can just give yourself a circle, and then in that way you're putting emphasis and importance on that one movement, and you can go off and then do something else. Be careful not to let yourself do endless circles or endless. You know, you, you don't go large endlessly. You don't do endless serpentines because you actually get what you need out of it the first time. It's just the nature of a circle. You can keep going and, and go round and round and round without needing to get off the circle for any reason. Um, whereas a loop, you know, it begins, it has a middle and then it ends. Um, a serpentine, same thing, beginning, middle and an end. But the circle is continuous. So don't let yourself get sucked into that continuous perpetual uh, motion of a circle. Give yourself one circle. Uh, if you're doing walk or trot, give yourself maybe two if you're doing canter and see what happens. I said to a student the other day, what would happen if you rode only one circle and you had to ride it to the best of your ability or you would fall off? Um, you know, at the end of that circle, if it wasn't your best circle, then you would fall off. 
you know, obviously she wasn't going to actually fall off, but that's how much importance you sh I asked her to put on that circle. And just like that, her circles improved amazingly. Think about how you plan your training. You know, what are you going to do in a particular day? Um, for me, I like to have, um, I like to have a sort of overarching view of where I'm going and, and where I've, what I've done already in that week or the week before. Um, but more often than not, I'll keep that in mind. But once I'm on the horse, I'll feel how the horse is feeling. And if the horse is feeling a little stiff, then we'll work on suppleness. If the horse is feeling really hot and ready to go, then we will go and do you know some of the hard movements, put a few movements together from the Grand Prix test. Um, there's nothing wrong with, you know, there's nothing wrong with not planning your, your session out, uh, you know, to the, to the minute, but it's better to be able to do that first and then throw it out the window rather than not do it at all and then be wondering what you're doing. So, and that leads to the next question. So this is the same viewer. She asked me what kind of structure should I have for my training? And I'm not sure if she meant in the individual sessions or within a week. So I'll talk about both. The, in, so in your individual session, um, by all means have a plan of what you want to do and what you want to achieve. You know, if you've been working on leg yield, then you, want, you might want to do three great leg yields on each side. If you've been working on shoulder in or travers, you might want to um, develop a smooth transition into and out of shoulder in or into and out of travers. You know, whatever your uh, training goals are, you want to make them, you know, part of your workout. However, you don't want to bang away at the same things day after day after day. So in terms of structured training, think about how your week is going to pan out. How many rides are you going to get in that particular week? What is happening at the end of the week? So for me, if it's a competition week, then, and competitions for me are usually on Sunday, then Saturday is usually a very light ride. You know, I might do five minutes, 10 minutes in the arena max. I might just get the horse, uh, you know, really balanced, carrying, nice and supple. Maybe for, for me, my um, trot half passes are the hardest. So I might do a tiny little um, half pass zigzag and, you know, do that for a couple of minutes maximum. And then, you know, once I'm really happy with how the, the, the horse is supple and carrying, then I just leave it and I would go for a walk. Um, Friday, so working backwards from the competition, Saturday is light. Friday would be a medium day, maybe, see, it depends how the horse is going, no more than a medium day. Or Friday could even be a day off. So Thursday or Friday, the horse would have the day off and whatever, the, and then the other day that I rode would be a medium day. And I wouldn't do a hard day. Um, I would probably do a hard day on Tuesday and then Monday would either be a day off Monday would probably be a day off and then Wednesday would be a either a hack out or a light lunge for the horse. In that way the horse has an easy day. So Monday is an easy day, Tuesday is a hard day, Wednesday is an easy day, a very easy day. Thursday might be the medium day, Friday is a day off, Saturday is a light day and then Sunday is the competition. So and of course the competition is a hard day. So in that way, in that particular week that I've just described, the horse has had two hard days a medium day and either two days off or a light day and a day off. And so in that way, you know, you're really only training and you really only should be training two hard days in any one week. If you try and push any more than that, the horse is going to start getting muscle soreness, back soreness, or if you're not getting it 100% right, and you're training hard days, you know, three or four days a week, the horse, you know, you might get some issues in terms of um, the horse not being clear on what you want. So do your hard days two days a week, definitely not together, and see how, you know, your, your training is not going to go any slower. It will probably, um, it will probably improve because also the emphasis comes back to you as a rider whereas on those particular days that's your two opportunities that week to train what you want to train and the rest of the week um, is a light or a medium day where you would just revise what you've done before.
and you know this is a re this is really common this is a really common way to learn you probably learned that way at school or uni you know you don't have you know hard day after hard day after hard day and then an exam you know it just doesn't work that way um, so don't do it with your horse yeah so structure your week you've got seven days and it doesn't matter how many days of the week you ride um, you know if you're riding six days you should still only have two hard days in there um, if you're riding five days you still only have two hard days if you're only riding four days a week I would have an easy day then a hard day then a day off then an easy day hard day day off and then the last day you know might be another day off or you might have a competition I'm not sure so in that way that's how you want to structure your training and then you can look at it as an overall picture as well you might be building up towards a competition and in that way you want to make sure that by the time entries have closed for that competition you can get through all the movements and then you've got another depending what kind of competition it is you'll have another two to four weeks of refining that and then putting it together as a test and then you know in preparation for the final competition in terms of test training for a competition at the show you're usually writing two tests so if we go backwards I would practice the test you're writing first because you know you've often got the draw so you net you know these things the test you're writing first I would practice the day before in the two rides before and if one of those right you know they're light rides so you would do a quick warm-up and then you would go through the test and don't worry if it's you know don't worry if your test practice is a disaster um, I actually prefer to have lousy test practices because it means that my chances of having a good day the next day are much higher if you have a good day the day before you know like the chance of having a bad day are higher the two days before the show ride your first test the one that you're riding first on the show day ride those in the two days before and then the test you're riding second at your show I would ride those in the you know early earlier again in the week and in that way you're getting the practice in and then the last two days before the competition you're practicing the test that you're riding first and um, a little reminder don't learn two tests on one day learn one test get it get it familiarized forget about it learn the next test get it familiarized compete it forget about it then pick up that test that you learnt earlier in the week and you could spread that out over a fortnight as well that's perfectly fine but yeah don't learn two tests on one day because you will just confuse yourself um, and in that way so what I've just described is an ideal way to prepare for your show in that last week um, getting your tests into your memory and um, practicing the whole um, sequence on your horse that's how you want to be able to structure it so I guess the the quick summary is don't overdo it in the week leading up to your show and we, on regular weeks make sure you have two hard days and then the rest easy easy days medium days or days off and don't forget um, that you don't need to ride every single one of your training days um, you could do a lunge or a hack out as well okay so thanks for those questions and if you've got questions of your own I would love to hear from you pop them in the comments below don't forget to like this video if you've been stuck at home doing circle after circle and you're not 100% sure what to do thanks for listening everyone I'll talk to you soon